So y'all know it's not a miss. Damn. Oh, that's cool. It's alive! What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Uh, first of all, I want to start off by saying I got a new camera. So if you notice immediately, the view is a little bit wider than you're used to seeing, which is um, kind of cool. So uh, first off, this is the Osmo Pocket 2. Now I've always used the Osmo Pocket ever since I started vlogging. I had the one and I had it you know, since the first vlog and I had the Best Buy protection plan because I felt like just in case I break something, you know, I can get another one. And I definitely used that protection plan twice. One time I took it to a drift event and like tire dust and stuff got into it and messed the gimbal up and it didn't, you know, didn't work anymore. So took that back a second time. Uh, you guys actually noticed a little dot like in the middle of the screen. Um, I didn't notice that until some people started pointing it out. And then after I saw that, took it back, said, hey, there's a dot in the screen. I need another one. So I got another one. So I got my third one and that one just, you know, it still works. It just got a little old and tired and now the Osmo Pocket 2 is out. So I took it back, kind of broken because it was, you know, was kind of broken. And then uh, I got the Osmo Pocket 2 as a replacement. So the Osmo Pocket 2, as you can already see, is wider, which is cool because I don't have to use that little attachment that I keep losing. <laughs> You know, I lost that thing for months, found it, and lost it the same day. So um, don't have to worry about that anymore. It's automatically wider, so that's cool. Has different microphones. Last one only had one microphone at the bottom. This one has four, and they're all around, so maybe it's surround sound. I don't know. I can't confirm yet. I have used this camera on the last vlog when I went uh, drifting in the parking lot, and, you know, that was just a test run on it, and I want to do that anyway. So this is another vlog, and this is my first time introducing the camera. So Osmo Pocket 2. Anyways. Last time we saw this car, um, it was I changed the turbo because it was leaking, and after I changed the turbo, uh, wastegate stopped working. So it wasn't really doing all that great. Like it, the first couple pulls, it was uh, you know hitting right where it's supposed to hit. The wastegate in here is the CX Racing wastegate. It's set to eight pounds, and it was doing eight pounds ever since I got a tune. It ran eight pounds for months, and then. Last time I was doing a pull, it hit 24. So, <laughs> so um, clearly something's broken. I actually looked and I'm about to show you guys now. And thankfully I got a new camera because this camera actually has zoom. So that's kind of cool. So that's gonna be useful. And I'm gonna have awkward moments talking in a zoom camera. But let me show you what I see and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss from there. So here is the wastegate in a very awkward position, very tight spot, way down there. And as you can see, now believe it or not, that bolt actually is tight. Hold on, let me zoom. I can zoom for y'all now. Believe it or not, that bolt actually is tight and the gasket has disappeared. There is no gasket. You probably can't see it on camera, but I can see the bottom bolt. So which tells me that the gasket has literally just vanished. I don't know, it just blew out. <laughs> Now the gasket I did use was the one that came with it. I guess it was a, a thick paper gasket and I guess it got hot and blew to pieces. So it's gone now. So I have metal gaskets now replacement somewhere over there, but also I have a new wastegate. So we're actually switching to a tile wastegate today. So I got the tile wastegate from MAP Performance and it comes with everything, comes with all the springs. It's gonna be a V-band, which is gonna be a whole lot easier to mount and dismount instead of the two bolt thing. I hate the two bolt thing. And because I am two bolt and I don't wanna pull the manifold off, cut it and make it V-band, I got an adapter. So I got actually got this from Amazon. <laughs> it's a 38 millimeter wastegate, um, two bolt flange to a 38 millimeter wastegate uh, V-band. So I do have to make some adjustments on this. I'll show you guys later. So hopefully I can finish this whole job today. I don't know, we'll see. It is Saturday, I actually did work today, but I got off work kind of early, so I'm working on it now. So, um, but the plan is to get this thing running by tomorrow. But first things first, I have to remove that wastegate out of there. So um, last time I put the bolts on there, did not want them to back out. So I put Loctite on there. So it's gonna be very hard to break that loose. So I'm gonna actually put this camera down. I'm gonna get that wastegate out of there. We'll go from there. And um, yes, cause I'm about to learn some new cuss words. So I will see you guys in a minute. Woo. <laughs> oh, Jesus. 
All right, guys, as you see, the wastegate is free. And as you see, it's not a lot of room down there. And uh, it's a pain in the ass. And especially because everything is Allen bolt. So this, I, I, I hate Allen bolt. Allen sucks. You got to do everything a quarter of, quarter of a turn. I did actually get this little guy in here. So shout out to Stephen Miller for buying me this little one eighth thing, snap on tool. And he just brought it to my house one day and said, hey, I got a tool for you. I'm like, okay, cool. So I had this thing for months and I never needed it until today. So thank you. I actually bought um, very small Allens too. And because I knew I'm going to have to do this job. So I actually bought these and it came in handy also. So that is done. So now that the wastegate is off, I really don't think anything was wrong with the wastegate. I really do think it was because the gasket was gone. And because the gasket was gone, uh, I don't know, the gases just weren't flowing like they were supposed to, and maybe that's why it never did what it was supposed to do. So, could be wrong. I don't know. We're going to upgrade. Well, there's a bolt missing. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, but anyways, we're going to do the upgraded wastegate anyways. And we got all the springs, and we're going to pick a boost to stay with, and we're going above 8 PSI. So, I had to talk with my tuner. I said, hey, um, no, uh, just, uh, just want to know, you know, I'm tuned on eight PSI. Can I, cannot can I do like 10? He said, you could do like up to 15 max, max 15. It says pump gas. I don't know if I want to do 15 pounds on pump gas. It might work. I don't know for how long I think I'm going to go somewhere in the middle. I might do maybe 11, maybe 10, maybe 11. I don't know. All the springs are over there. Um, you can get a a diagram of what springs to match with what to get the exact spring pressure you want so i think i'm gonna look and see what options i have and i think i'm gonna try to go somewhere between the 10 and 11 pound thing and that way it'll give me a little bit more boost have a little bit more horsepower you know what i'm saying Just, and then you know if it works 100 percent like it's supposed to then awesome so i'll stay i'll try to stay closer to that we'll see in a second and um but let me show you what my adapter thing will do and then I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to this, which again, I'll show you in a second. So this is how the wastegate sat in the car. Two bolt flange, pain in the ass. Had to go do one at the top and the other one I actually got to get from under the car. So it's really, really tough doing all that. So we're getting rid of that. So we're gonna swap this out and make this a two bolt flange that mounts to that two bolt. And when that two bolt goes in there, again, this goes into a right there. And then I can V-band it together and we can solve a whole lot of issues and that way if i need to make some changes it won't be such a pain in the ass because that will just v-band right together but the adjustments i need to make on this is supposed to be v-band uh it's kind of shaped funny so on a regular v-band here's the one that it came with v-band ring something you can weld onto if you need to you see the edge is kind of bezeled i love having a zoom feature you can see the edge is kind of beveled because it fits into the pocket of the V-band. This one, however, is not. This one is dead straight. And because it's dead straight, it will dead ass not go where it's supposed to go. So, all right, so um, the bevel, you see the bevel fits smooth right in the pocket on its own half. And when you use this side, it does not fit flush and it will not connect together so um, there's no way you can try to smash it in there but even still it only goes so far so it will not close all the way because of that so I have to I have a Dremel in here and I'm going to try to grind a bevel into here and then maybe they'll fit together better all right and life hack always wear your safety goggles before using some very fast spinning objects it's not a hack there's don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. See what happens. Man, it works. This is gonna take a while. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna really work. Um, this thing is already starting to chip away, and I barely scratched the surface, literally. So, um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna run to the store. Let's go to Home Depot. Let's get something else. Okay, I changed my mind. We're going to skip the store. We're going to go to the store later. Let's go ahead and do everything else first, and that'll be the very last thing I do. And then once that goes in there, this will go right on top, and everything will be nice and simple after that. So let's go ahead and do all the, do everything else first, then go to the store, fix that thing, and then whatever. So anyways, here's the tile wastegate. 
and this is how it comes. It comes with all the springs. If you buy it brand new, it comes with all the springs. It comes with the uh, fittings because on here they have um, air ports on the side, which I'm not sure why. H2O, which is uh, water, so you can actually um, cool it with uh, water jackets. And then your back port, which will be your you know your wastegate port, and then a top port, which if you add a boost controller, then you use that port. So, um, but here's the wastegate springs. Here are the diagrams. So this is a, what's up, Steve? This is a MVS, um, MVS tile wastegate, and these are the pressures. So over here is bar, and over here is your spring pressure. So this is, I guess they changed the uh, spring colors over time. So this says from uh, December 2008 to January 15, 2012 and everything after that. So since I just got it and 2012 was like, you know, 50 years ago. Okay, it was like 8, 9, maybe 10, almost 10, almost 10, almost 10 years ago. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assume it's these colors. So if I want, let's see, there's 10.15 pounds, there's 11.6 and there's 13. I think 11.6 close to 12 might be what I think I'll go for. So 11.6, so if I want that, that's the old color. Let's scroll to the new color. So I would use the white and the green. So take the white one, put it together with the green one. And when I put that in there, that is going to be 11.6 pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and take um, these off. It looks like it's just a bunch of little allens and it's the size is a three a three is very very small so i'll loosen and take them all out i guess i'll do a little bit at a time well they're already kind of loose because um there's no spring in there <laughs> so um i guess they weren't really factory tightened or anything so that that works There we go. No spring in there. There's the diaphragm. And that pushes up and you know, that's your spring pressure right there. So Alright, so we're taking the white and the green. Literally just put it there. And this is the fun part. Mashing this thing on here. So we're gonna push that down. And that's a oh, that's tough. And get a bolt in there to hold it in place. Switch it to the other side, get one over here. There we go. We have a uh, 11.6 pound spring in there that's very hard to move with my hand. Ow! But hey, the boost will do it for me. So um, now we're just gonna go ahead and it comes with these plugs to plug up the uh, things on the side that say air. Again, I don't know what the air is for. Maybe it's for multiple. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not even gonna. I ain't gonna act like I know. I literally don't know. I'm just gonna plug them up because they came with these and they, they plug in the same holes. So just plug them up. As far as the water jackets, the H2O, I don't think I have to plug those up because that would only be if I'm sending water through it and I'm not sending water through it. I'm not gonna put water on here. Move you guys up here so you can actually see me. This is a, this is like a banjo bolt for the wastegate for air to go through. And that will screw into the, the lower port. And that way that one would go straight from the turbo to the lower port and that is spring pressure, which is 11.6 pounds. So all I can do is just put that on there, tighten it. I'm actually gonna put some thread sealing on there, but for example, that's what it looks like and then it's not tight yet, so that's why it's wiggling. So that way I can figure out what orientation I want to put it, and then I can tighten it down, and then 
that way I can find the easiest way to put the hose on there so, so there you go now the wastegate is done all right I'm back from the store just got a tungsten cutter and a, another grinding wheel for metal so hopefully between those two it should work so I'm gonna go ahead and try to the carbine cutter first and um yeah, let's try to make this thing uh, work. That thing works amazing. <laughs> now that is a lot of metal shavings. Jesus Christ, that was a mess, but it worked. So, show you what what we're working with now this is the new bezeled edge I know it's not the cleanest thing in the world but it does have the shape of a regular uh, v-band clamp so when I put these together first off put the firing ring in there or seal whatever you want to call it this will be mounted in the car two bolts and that will connect together and then you take the flange and it should be a nice flat solid seal perfect 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 it's exactly what i wanted so now once i put this in the car this flange right here every time i want to move anything or do anything with this wastegate it will be v-band it will not be two bolt i will never have to do these undo these two bolts or get under the car to get that one because you can't get it from the top so that is awesome perfect 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 also, let's talk about something else I had to do. I had to do some math, and luckily my math all checked out, so everything's good. Um, everything should go on no problem. So first of all, this is a flange. Like I said, it's a two-bolt flange. Now the the wastegate fitting, um, you know, for this is this is not threaded. The pipe is the pipe is threaded and had Allen's on there. I hate Allen. I don't like Allen. If your name's Allen, I'm sorry. Don't feel offended. But I don't like Allen, so I'm definitely not using it. And two reasons I'm not using it because one, I don't like Allen. This is too tall. So when this is in there, if I want to thread that back on to the pipe, that's too tall, and this does not fit. I cannot use this because it's too tall. So um, I found bolts, and luckily I guessed the right thread pitch, which is uh, M8125. They will sit flush. It will be mounted to the pipe, threaded into the pipe, and my V-band clamp fits right over top of it. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that fitment, boy. Static, boy. So yes, again, when I put this thing in here, I'm about to do it now, I will never have to take it off. Ah, so, it's gonna feel so good. If you're doing a CX racing kit, um, if it's not too late, I would suggest doing this. I will leave a link in the description to this thing, and you can watch this video again and do it yourself because the two bolt thing is terrible. It's a pain in the ass. I'm never doing that again. So, all right. I know you guys can't see anything, but you're just gonna have to trust me. Um, got a metal gasket this time. No more plastic or paper, whatever it was. And put a mat, uh, metal gasket in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to thread this thing in there. And this should be permanent. And since there's no wastegate on it, it's not going to be very hard to do it. So, all right, adapter is in. Officially V-band converted. That's so nice. That's so nice. There's still not a lot of room in here. In retrospect, I wish I would just cut this whole thing out and just mounted my battery tray to the back of the firewall or something, and then I'd have all this room. But then I wouldn't have this cool catch can. So, also I pulled the filter off the catch can to see how much blow by I had in there. Nothing. We good way good that's good to know anyways now let's put the wastegate on there all right you guys probably can't see a thing i can barely see in here but um like i said this is still a very tight spot but it will work and we're gonna go ahead and fish this in there i did put thread sealing on there and tighten that down so that's gonna be the position um the only other problem let me show you that before you get too far um I don't have a dump tube, so I'm just going to point this down and hopefully it doesn't spit too much fire. So um, I would definitely get that dump tube soon, but 
to make sure everything works first, let's go ahead and just put it in there now. And when I take it out again, it won't be that hard. So go ahead and slide it down in there any way I can. Fit it and clamp it. Mounted! New wastegate! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Alright guys, this is what success looks like. Wastegate is in there and successful. Three, uh, 38 millimeter two bolt to V band switch. And uh, that makes it so much easier to put in, take out, and everything. And we got a higher spring in there so it'll make more boost. So I'll have more fun, it'll be more reliable, and I should be good. So I need to replace the line still. Uh, I'm gonna use the line I had before because it had no leaks, it wasn't the problem. And also got a new uh, clamp. I ordered another clamp like that so I can replace that because that looks kind of ghetto. And we'll be good. Now I'm trying to debate if I want to go drive tonight or just drive it in the morning. Because if I drive tonight, you guys aren't going to see anything. I don't know if it works, but, you know, that's that's all we got. So I might wait and drive it in the morning. We'll see. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted now. A mistake was made. So, um... I know it's dark, you guys couldn't see anything, so I just took it for a quick test drive, off camera, I'm sorry. Um, I just went half throttle, just half throttle, just to see if, you know, it wouldn't spike up the 20 some pounds, because that's what it was doing before. I'd go half throttle, and it would spike up to like 15, 18, 20, and I just tried to see, just to make sure it wouldn't do that, and then I'd get a real drive tomorrow, and it did that. So I'm like, okay, how is that happening? When I literally changed the wastegate, I feel like I did everything for no reason. But then, thanks to Google, um, first of all, they don't really give you any instructions. Um, they don't tell you what port is what. I just assumed, and I assumed wrong. So the port I put in for the top air, I mean, I'm definitely going to put some captions or something as I'm doing it earlier. You probably saw it already, that that is the wrong port. So I have to change the one that I have the wastegate line into at the top and put it in one of the side ones and plug the top. So let's do that, try half throttle, and see if it works. Even though it's not that hard to take out, I don't have to take it out. Um, all I gotta do is take out that thing um, there and swap it with that one. So I think I have enough room to do it while it's in there. Even though, again, it's not hard to take out since it's V-band now, but if I don't have to take it out, I won't. So let me swap those real quick and see if it works. All right, I swapped them. Um, you can see the uh, flat washer is now at the top and that is on the side so um, after I took the top one off it made sense because when I looked at it that shit was looking dead at the springs I don't know why I thought that was a good spot but I make mistakes and uh, hopefully we just solve them so I'm gonna take it for another spin I guess I'll bring you guys along again not going crazy just uh, just a little just to see if it doesn't overboost that's all all right I know it's dark hopefully you can see me here's the boost gauge AFR's in the corner, half throttle in third. Hit 12, but it didn't hit 24, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I heard the wastegate that time. I didn't hear it before. It's, a, it's been a while since I heard the wastegate, so it's kind of working, but it's still, that did hit 15, so I'm not sure. But I still never really floored it. I ran up to 17. Oh shit. <laughs> Better than 20. so um we made progress i can actually hear the wastegate open but um it's still hitting too much boost hitting 18 at you know pretty much full throttle i kind of let out you know as soon as i see it kind of get up there so um it could be boost spiking or maybe the springs are not what i thought they were i mean the colors are kind of weird i'm gonna try a lower spring and see but i'm not gonna do it tonight it's 11 o'clock 
and I'm kind of tired. So I would just do this in the morning. Again, taking the wastegate out isn't that hard, so shouldn't be the end of the world. So we'll, we'll see you guys in the morning. I couldn't go to sleep on that note. There's just too much curiosity. And like I said, it's not hard to take it out. It only takes a couple minutes now. So, but I was looking, maybe the diaphragm was messed up, but no, it looks fine. Everything fits flush still. I, I don't, I don't know, man. I guess I'll try a different spring and see what happens. I don't know. That definitely shouldn't be an 18, 18 pound spring though, so I mean, I don't know. So looking at the chart again, the plain black spring is 8.7 pounds, so I'm just going to throw that in there. This is a simple 8 pound spring and see if that does what it's supposed to do. I let off because I was scared, but I think it did stay at eight pounds. I'm gonna try again and just uh, hope for the best. cars are fun when they work when they don't it's a headache <laughs> um, it's it's working but it's not working the way I want it to work so put the 8 pound spring in there and now it's peaking to like 12 and 13 pounds which which is okay which is kind of what I wanted that's why I try to put the other like 12 pound spring in there but the AFRs at that spring uh, at, at that boost level isn't I don't know if that's really safe. It's doing like between 12, 7, and 13. Um, before it was running 11, 7 when it was at 8 pounds with the old turbo. So I don't know what's going on. I know it seems like it's boost creeping like about 5 pounds over the spring. Because it was hitting 18 before with the 11 pound spring, 12 pound spring. And now it's doing, you know, with 8 pounds, now it's doing 13. So. I know the wastegate location isn't the best when it comes to CX kits. I know people have told me that before. I knew that going in, but hey, wanted to see what happens. And um, but what I'm confused on, it never boost creeped before. When I first put the thing together and got a dynoed and drove it for a couple months, the only reason I changed that turbo was because it was leaking. It never boost creeped on that, even on 
the cheap wastegate. And honestly, I don't even think the cheap wastegate was the problem. I think it was because the gasket blew up. So um, for whatever reason, now it's boost creeping and it's annoying. So I changed the turbo, but it's the same exact turbo. I don't know what would be different. And it's boost creeping now. So I don't know. It's weird. I might put a lower spring in there so I can, I don't know. But talk to the tuner, see if those AFRs are safe. I don't think they are not for turbo applications so if they're not then i will change another spring in the morning i'm not doing anything else tonight i'm tired and um i guess uh i might see you in the morning or i might just call this a video now change the wastegate so we made progress but it's not still not doing what i wanted to do so <sighs> so another update um despite it being midnight <laughs> and I'm still in the garage looking at this thing uh, tuner responded um, obviously he told me the AFRs are kind of high he said uh, make sure the line on the the vacuum line on the fuel pressure regulator is good I reach under there because there's a port that goes from a fuel pressure regulator on the M50 rail and it goes directly to the intake manifold reach under the intake manifold gone not even there not even connected so I'm probably not getting the right fuel pressure and that's why the AFRs are so high so I fished the line out I'm gonna try to slide it back on there um, I imagine it probably blew off when it over boosted so and it probably never been on there ever since so um, maybe with the right boost level now it would be alright I don't know I'm a, I don't know if I want to take this car out it's midnight I really don't want to do this to these neighbors but at least I think I know what the problem is. I'll wait till the morning. I can wait till the morning and slide that on there and hopefully it's all good. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Hey, we're going to hear me one more time, man. Slid the thing back on there. Let's see what the AFRs look like. <laughs> That's gonna be the end of the video everything was a success and everything works so i mean <laughs> we're back to where we started now um i was losing my mind i'm like okay i changed the turbo and everything broke and i was like is it the turbo it can't be the turbo why would it be the turbo and i, I like that was the only thing that i changed and then it just it just stopped working so anyways uh we are successful now we are making 12 pounds of boost sometimes 13 which is fine and uh, AFRs are still back down to 11. So after changing the um, or plugging the vacuum line back up and taking it for a spin, it stayed in the 11s the whole time, and we are back. So we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. Trims are where they're supposed to be. Boost is what I want it to be, and it was a full success. So that is freaking awesome, and I am super happy, and <laughs> I'm excited. I can go drive this car again. Um, I actually did drive it even when it was over boosting. I just didn't hit boost. I took it to work because some coworkers wanted to see it because they always saw me talk about it. So took it to work, just had to stay out of boost. And, you know, that sucked. But, hey, still have fun driving the car. And now I can actually hit boost again. So <laughs> so um, thank you again, Dave, for letting me know uh, what the problem was. Again, at uh, 1234 now, 1234 at night. Uh, Sam's pulling out Christmas gifts over there in Christmas tree and all that stuff. You already know what's going on over there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was losing my mind, and I'm glad that that's all it was. So if anybody else has that problem, you might want to check that line. <laughs>
good to have more information. That way, if I have that problem again, I know to check that line. If I see anybody else with that problem, they know to check the line. I'll tell them to check the line. And yeah, that's all I got. So success, 12 pounds, good AFRs, new wastegate, V-band, easy to take off, and success, absolute success. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Do some more stuff to this car. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But that's all I got for tonight. I'm going to bed. Deuces.